Good morning, first graders, and welcome to April Number Corner. Let's get started right away. And let's head off to our calendar. Today it is April 16th, 2020, and we're seeing a circle. All right, friends, let's take a closer look at that circle, and we need to ask ourselves, is this shape symmetrical? We're going to start by dividing it in half vertically or up and down. Does that side look the same as that? You're right, they do, they match. So we're gonna add another line and divide this circle into fourths. Do all four pieces match or look the same? You're right, it does. Circles have symmetry and can be divided into fourths or four equal pieces. We're ready to add that to our calendar grid observations. So we saw that circle, and our circle is able to divide into force. So yes, it does have symmetry. And do you have any predictions on what we might see for tomorrow? And it might be a little harder to predict the shape, but can you make a prediction on whether or not it will divide into equal pieces and have symmetry? Remember, today it was able to divide into four equal pieces. We'll have to check it and see what you, if your prediction comes true tomorrow. All right, first graders, we are ready to move on to days of school. Today, it is the 133rd day of school. Let's count it up. We have 100, 110, 120, 130, 131, 132, 133. First graders, I'm wondering, how many more days until we have our next decade day? If you're saying seven, you're correct. We know that 3 plus 7 makes a group of 10. So in 7 more days, we'll have our next decade day. Taking a look at this grid now, how many more days till it's our 150th day of school? You're right, 17. We see this group of 10 and 7 more to make 17. In 17 more days, it will be the 150th day of school. Let's take a closer look, though, at our number 133. When we look at 133, we're noticing that we still just have one group of 100, and we still have three groups of 10s. But our number in the one spot has increased. We have one more X or one more one. So instead of just two ones, we see three ones there. That number in the one spot has gotten larger by one digit or one number. All right, kiddos, it is time for our calendar collector. I want to remind you it is our third week of doing this. And before we even spin, I want us to quick think. If I'm at five popsicle sticks right now, how many more do I need to get that group of 10? We talked about it yesterday. You're right, we need five more popsicle sticks to be able to make that trade. All right, kiddos, let's spin and find out how many more we're adding to our collection. And we are adding those five more. I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and five. Five plus five equals 10. We are ready to trade those for a bundle. So I'm going to quick clear our screen. And I'm going to just put out that group of 10. 
But I want us to rethink, what could we say for our next equation? Looking at what we see up here, what could we write down? Well, we see that group of 10, but do we have any extra? No, we don't. 10 plus 0 equals 10. All right, first grade friends, nice work. We have one more job today. And it is with our number line. Right now, friends, we did a lot of work talking about what number comes before or in front and what number comes after or behind. Remember, we're looking at groups of 10 here. So to get warmed up, let's start counting by tens. Are you ready? We're going to start at zero. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Count backwards with me. 120, 110, 190, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. Today, though, instead of deciding what number comes before or after one of these 10 numbers, we are going to be adding or subtracting multiple groups of 10. So I want you to think, if we were at 20 right now, and I added two more groups of 10, or I added 20, where would I land? Let's take some jumps and count by tens to see. 10, 20. What number am I going to find right there? You're right. I'm going to find 40. 20 plus 20 equals 40. All right, let's do another one, friends. What if I was at 80 and I took away or subtracted 20? Count it with me. We're going to count by tens. 10, 20. Did you notice when I took away or subtracted, I went backwards with my hops. I was going towards smaller numbers. What are we going to find, though, friends? You're right, 60. Very nice work. Right now, where do you think we would land if I was at 80 and I added 40? Count by tens with me to check. 10, 20, 30, 40. What number is there? 120. You got it. Can you do some thinking now, friends? What if I was at 110 and I took away 20? Minus 10, minus 20. What are we going to find? 90. What if I was at 20 first graders and I took away 20? Minus 10, minus 20. Zero, you got it. First graders, what if I was at zero and I added 30? 10, 20, 30. This is an easy one, right? Whenever we're adding to zero, we know it's the same number. So 30 is what I was going to see. What if I'm at 30, though, and I take away 20? You are right. We're going to see the number 10. Very nice. First graders, what if I was at 40 and I added 30? 10, 20, 30. What number am I going to see? 
70. You got it. Well, first graders, what if I was at 70 now and I added 30? 10, 20, 30. You're right, 100. First graders, did you notice I wasn't counting by ones when I took each hop? I didn't say I did 70 plus 3. I did 70 plus 30. Each time I took a jump, it was the same thing as me saying, well, I'm adding another group of 10. Each jump was another group of 10. So even though I only see three hops, I know that's the same as taking 10 really small steps in a row. When we are doing our number line work, we are working on counting by 10. So each jump is going to be equal to 10 whether we're going forward or we're going backwards. Make sure you're practicing that along with me. All right, very nice work, first graders, and we'll see you tomorrow.